And let's be honest, going out for a meal is something that we all like to enjoy from time to time. And all of us should mean all. You'd like to think that the bad old days of people with disabilities effectively being barred from many public places by a lack of accessible facilities were gone for good. But I'm afraid that's not the case. In far too many eating establishments, there's no sign of a toilet that can accommodate a wheelchair. Now, not many of us would like to spend an entire evening in a restaurant where you simply could not go to the loo. Not comfortable. So after hearing one family's story, we wanted to find out why, despite there being laws around equality, it's still easy to find places where the facilities simply are not equal. When you've got to go, you've got to go. And while these days a trip to the bathroom should be straightforward for anybody dining out, it's something that millions of people still can't take for granted. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah we just broke Look at the lost cap. The after-school club at this Hampshire primary is where today seven-year-old Hadley is playing a game called Botcha with a group of friends, including his twin sister, Erica. The session is run by their mum, Sarah, and dad, Martin. Brilliant. So, I've never heard of this game. Tell me what it is exactly. So, Botcha is um, a Paralympic sport, a bit like bowls, really. So, you right. have a jack, and you have two different colour balls, and you're trying to get your ball closest to the jack. So, so he will roll his ball from, from, from the wheelchair. Um, and all yes. the other children are using just a, a normal class chair, so that they're all equal. So. Lovely. It's really good. Now, tell me a little bit about Hadley. So, Hadley is seven years old, and he has cerebral palsy, which basically means his legs are too tight and he's unable to walk. Well, I think I'd better watch it again yeah. properly. How about that? Well, when he's not exhausting himself playing botcher, like most boys his age, Hadley just loves eating pizza. So was it better when you played boys against girls? No. No? But while eating at home causes few problems, heading out to a restaurant for a family meal can still throw up issues that the family thought were long consigned to the past. Last Christmas they were planning to take Hadley's great-grandmother for a meal at the Romsey branch of restaurant chain Pretzel. And as she always does before visiting anywhere for the first time, Sarah went online to check up on whether the venue was suitable for visitors with a disability. So I went online and on their website under the ROMZ Preso it does state that there is disabled access. So of course that was a tick in the box for me um, and I also very clearly included um, on the booking form as we booked online that we required disabled access and there would be a wheelchair user in the party. So were you satisfied in your mind at that point? Yeah. And were you fairly confident that the disabled facilities would be there? Yeah, to me, disabled access means disabled access. I, I believed that what we would get would be a nice experience and that my mm. son would, and my grandma would be able to get in and out. So confident that the restaurant had a suitable disabled access policy in place, Hadley and his family turned up at the restaurant, looking forward to a lovely festive feast. So what happened when you actually got there? We were just shown to the table and we had a lovely table by the window. You know, everyone was having a nice time. Um, and it was about halfway through the, our main course is that my son said he needed the toilet. Um, so my, my husband said, that's fine, I'll, I'll take him. Went to find a member of staff to say, you know, where's your accessible toilet? To which he was told, uh, there isn't one. Um, the toilets are upstairs. What was his reaction at the time? He was... He was really shocked to be honest and it kind of questioned it and said I'm sorry there isn't one and they said oh no the, the toilets are upstairs they, they didn't apologize and of course by this point Hadley was desperate to go and so the only option was for my husband to take him out of his wheelchair and carry him up the stairs it's quite it? difficult yes. he's seven he's seven yes. and he's not you know he's he's not a baby by any stretch no. Despite the indignity for Hadley, in order to get to the loo, there really was no other option than for his dad to carry him up the stairs. So did Hadley find that um, sort of like embarrassing or yeah. distressing? He, he does. Be carried up? He does, although sadly he's all too used to it because there are seldom places for us to go. He considers himself quite a grown-up kid now. He's seven years old. He's perfectly capable of getting himself around in his wheelchair, so it's not nice for him to have to kind of relinquish that responsibility and be taken 
messing with our house, really. How frustrating is it to you? It's hugely frustrating. We have to we have to plan everything. It's like military position. Is there going to be a toilet? And so you tend to stick to restaurants that have that are big brands that are you know high street names because you would presume they're going to have better facility than say the cafe down the road in the village. Of course, in this case, choosing a big high street name hadn't helped at all. The family didn't make a fuss at the time, not wanting to put a dampener on the Christmas celebrations. But Sarah did later on make her feelings known on social media. I actually tweeted them and said, um, you know, I've just got home from a meal and I'm so disappointed that it's, you know, it's almost 2018 and still there are no disabled facilities. And like you, I believe that the law says if you provide even one toilet, that toilet should be accessible to everybody. Unfortunately, though, the law on this isn't quite as clear-cut as you might think. In the UK, the Equality Act protects the rights of all disabled people. Now, the Equality Act was introduced back in 2010. So to me, it's shocking to see that some of these problems are still ongoing. What the law says is that businesses should make reasonable adjustments to cater for disabled customers. For Hadley's mum, Sarah, that should be simple. Yeah, I consider being able to use the toilet very reasonable. Clearly, yeah. presos don't seem to feel that way. So, bottom line, what did, how did they excuse that? They they've said that it's a this particular restaurant is a Grade Two listed building, um, and that they are unable to install a toilet on that particular level, which I. I don't really believe, to be honest with you. I think they're able to install a, re um, a kitchen. Perhaps the difficulty here is that the instruction to make reasonable adjustments is open to interpretation. And in some areas, local authorities accept that if a restaurant is in a historical listed building, installing a disabled toilet may be unreasonably expensive and complex. But Sarah doesn't agree. Disabled people want to go and eat in restaurants as well, and they need to use the loo, we all do. Well, it seems that Sarah's family story isn't uncommon. Fiona Jarvis has multiple sclerosis and has used her own similar experiences to set up a blog called Blue Bad Style, where she looks at eating out for disabled people and reviews the loos alongside the food itself. Now, Fiona took us along to her local pub in West London to show that it is possible to get an accessible toilet right. It's really good because the decor is the same as the able-bodied loos. They haven't skimped on putting uh, the, the, uh, the panelling in, the colours are the same. They've actually used really high quality grab rails um, that look sleek. There are five grab rails, the sink's at the right height, the mirror's at the right height, the soap's accessible. The only issue is the toilet roll dispenser is a little bit far from the toilet, but that's a minor issue. But in her career as a food blogger, Fiona's come across too many establishments that do not tick all the boxes in the way this one does. One of the worst experiences was in my favorite restaurant, and I knew there was a disabled loo on the same floor. Went to the loo, thought, oh, this is good, I've got in, but then I realised I couldn't actually shut the door behind me. And that was absolutely devastating because it meant I, I couldn't go to the loo. If I pay to go out somewhere, I want to have the same experience as my able-bodied uh, people that I'm with. So they might go into a really glamorous, beautiful looking toilet, whereas I'll go into something that looks like a hospital, or worse than that is a filthy hospital. As a result, Fiona assembled what she calls her Disabled Toilet Police, made up of other people with disabilities who send her pictures of the facilities they find. And from these, she issues awards for the best and indeed the most ludicrous loos that they've come across. Very often they are so bad, they're funny. Things like the bars are blocking the toilet itself, so you can't actually sit on the toilet because there's a bar in the way, or 
there are stairs up to a toilet or it's in a porter cabin outside the restaurant, that sort of thing. Um, and we encourage people to send us those, that information. Uh, one of the key things that's a problem is that, particularly in hospitality venues, is that they store anything in there. So when you want to go to the loo, they have to move all the high chairs out, the bowls of water out, the coats out. So you can never go to the loo without anyone noticing because the whole restaurant is more or less in an uproar whenever you want to go to the loo. And although Fiona believes that things have got better in recent years, as far as she's concerned, there's still a very long way to go. Accessibility has improved, i.e. getting into places has improved a little bit. But uh, disabled toilets are still uh, very f few and far between, and they are generally not up to standard. They're not up to scratch. They are actually a disgrace to um, a country that's in the Western world in the 21st century. Change is not quick enough. We've still got too many establishments that actually have no disabled facilities whatsoever, and that needs to change. And pressure for that to happen is definitely growing. Paralympic athlete Anne Waffler Strike made headlines after revealing she had no choice but to wet herself on a train because there was no disabled toilet she could use, which is terrible. And stories like this were considered by the Government Select Committee on Women and Equalities, which in 2017 published the results of its inquiry into the accessibility of homes, buildings and public spaces. It found that the 2010 law hadn't had the impact it was expected to and called on the government to take a clearer lead on improving access for the disabled. MP Maria Miller heads up the committee. The Equality Act is a good piece of legislation, but one of the things that my committee wants to look at really is uh, whether the Equality Act should have uh, more teeth when it comes to enforcement. All organisations need to be able to make reasonable adjustments to be able to um, uh, meet the needs of disabled customers and also disabled employees as well. With the report critical of the many restaurants, pubs and clubs that still don't even have a disabled toilet, it went as far as calling for local authorities to be allowed to refuse to grant or renew these premises a licence until the necessary changes are made. So when we told Maria Miller about the pretzel restaurant that billed itself as having disabled access when there was no disabled loo, she was decidedly unimpressed. I think it's really um, unacceptable if a restaurant is going to portray itself as disability friendly, as disability accessible, uh, then that really has to be not only being able to get over the threshold, being able to sit at a table, but also to be able to use the toilet is a pretty basic thing. The government has yet to respond to the Women and Equality Committee's report. It's disappointing that we haven't heard about that, particularly given um, the severity of the findings um, and the impediment that we found for disabled people to be able to um, expect to use public spaces in the way that anybody else would use them. Um, so we are pressing the government for a response to this. It's important um, and we really need to understand what progress is being made. Now, when we spoke to Pretzo, it told us that it had apologised to Sarah and her family for the incident. It went on to say that, in line with legal requirements, it currently provides accessible toilets where possible. And while it regrets that there are some instances where it's not possible to provide accessible toilets, it does strive to provide them in all of their new restaurants. And very positively, Pretzo also said that in light of this incident, it's reviewing the labelling on its website to ensure that the disabled access logo is only used where the restaurant does have an accessible toilet. And while that is a welcome step for Hadley's mum, Sarah, she'd like to see all restaurants get their act together on this subject so that no one else has to be carried up or down the stairs just to get to the loo. He doesn't consider himself any different to anybody else, so why does he have to be treated differently? I do feel I need to, to st stand up for him, but also for everybody else. You know, He's not the only disabled person in the world that wants to be able to go out and eat with his family or friends. Well, I'm with you. Thank you.